they had gotten on, it, I it, I had to back out and come back in again. And it sounds like the same thing uh -huh. happened to you. Yeah, because I hit the tweet over on the left. Yeah, and so did I. So I don't, I don't know what's wrong with that. But anyway, here we are. Uh, my name is Sue Painter, and with me is my buddy and cohort in crime, Moni Marcus. And every week we run a peep show where we pull back the curtains on our business and let you know what goes on in the online marketing world. Um, and we call it our online business reality show. We are here really to take your questions and you are welcome to join us. And I'm afraid to tweet it out again now. I'm afraid it'll end it again. Um, <clears throat> but we're here to take your questions about anything to do with online marketing or owning your own business because we are both solo professionals who have been in the business for a lot of years. If you like what we're having to say, we ask you that you clap the little hands and give us props. And otherwise, we'll chat along until you join us and ask a question, which you can do by typing slash Q before your comment in the chat box. And it will pull it over into the question box and we can answer it for you. Marnie, you have anything else to add before we get going? Uh, no, that's good. I'm trying to post on some social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, know, new... I know. I hate that we asked. We had a couple of people there and. I hate that we lost them. So we'll see. I'm going to, you say, you say a little bit about online marketing. I'm going to try to tweet this and see if it kicks me off. Yeah. Um, gosh, we, we both been doing, been doing online marketing for what? You're at least a decade. And yeah. I've been doing it since 96, like 94, 94. So uh, it's changed a lot over the years and, um, and it's gotten a little trickier to get, you know, in the old days, you could get yourself on Yahoo or um, Google or whatever. Well, there wasn't a Google way back. <laughs> but, you know, you could get yourself listed and, hey, you're ready to go, you know. Yeah. But there's millions of new websites come up every day. So you've got to have a way to stand out and uh, make yourself uh, different from the crowd. And I think a big piece of doing that is your story and what makes you unique in the marketplace and really bringing that to the forefront so that you don't just blend in with everybody else doing something similar. Yeah. What, do, what do you think makes the difference? You know, we said we would talk about um, keeping your online marketing simple, simple systems. Mm -hmm. And I think the one thing that I find that people who want to, who want to start marketing online do is they try to do too much at once. They decide that they're going to be on every single social media um, a channel that there is. Um, and they, um, instead of building the back end of their business as faithfully as they build their social media channels, they kind of go out and go whole hog on a whole bunch of social media, but there's not a lot of systems and substance to back it up. So an example of that is, um, Ernie, are you there? Yeah. Can you see me? You're kind of frozen, but you're there and I can hear you. <laughs> Well, all of a sudden I have a. Uh oh, you got a blue screen. That's not good. Blue screen on my computer and I'm. Oh, wow. Okay, so we lost Sue. I'm not sure if this is still recording. It says it's recording, so I will just keep talking here as we she tries to get back on. She's having a tech issue. So, um, all right, so we were talking about keeping your marketing simple and, um, I, you know, I really think that if you get down to your core 
message, which is really inside of your story. If you know what your story is, what it is that makes you unique, what you've gone through the, and you have to look at the hard things in your life that you've gone to through, you know, they say your mess is your message. If you dig down into that story, you'll find the message that you're here to convey. And out of that, you can find, you know, the different lessons that you learned along the way. And as you co convey that story and let it come out in the thread of all your marketing, whether you're on whatever social media you want to keep up with, as long as you're conveying a consistent message, you start to brand yourself from that point. Um, Sue is getting on another computer, so we'll hopefully she'll be able to hop back in. Um, I think that that makes marketing simple to me. It's when you're jumping all over the place, which I've been <laughs> known to do over the years, because you have so many different interests and you hop from, you're doing one thing and then you're doing another thing and you're doing another thing and then you confuse your audience because um, you're sending out mixed messages, you know, that dilutes and confuses your audience where they don't know what it is that you're doing. So, um, I think a big piece of keeping it simple is just making sure that you're like a beacon sending out the same message. Um, now somebody asked if we're talking about the best and fastest way to promote a product with CPA offers. Um, we're not really talking about CPA at the moment. Um, if you can build your audience, with whether you want to use Google AdSense or, um, or AdWords, I should say, um, or Facebook ads or whatever like that to try to reach a bigger audience, then you, you know, you're paying for that per action for that. And as you do it, I still say, you know, keep it simple, convey your message, um, lead people into something free that leads them into something, maybe a no brainer price. I, I, I bought a product the other day, a couple days ago that I really like. Um, and the guy had a free download. So it was like a report type download and, and you got that. But then while you're waiting it for it to deliver, he showed you, um, a, um, he showed you a product that was a more of a video product. All of his sales pages were just like videos. So you go to the next page and there's a product he's selling for like, and he, he really pumps it up really big. And it's only like $7 just cause he wants you to get you, he's wanting to get you to be a buyer, right? So he's giving you a really good deal on this first product to get you to buy. So you buy the $7 product. And then as you're waiting for the $7 product, he shows you something else that's even, you know, more expanded. And then, uh, you know, say it's a $97 product there. And then if you say, nah, I don't know if I really want that, then he'll say, well, I really want you to have this. I really think you ought to have it. And you can break this into payments. So you're going to do three payments of $30 over the next three months. So you only pay $30 right now. So, um, it's just this way of, um, getting people into your funnel and then keeping them buying and either up selling or down selling as they go through that. And if you can map that out, I think that's the main thing is just mapping it out. So yay. <laughs> so. I had to jump on another computer. I think my, I think my MacBook just croaked. Oh, not good. I know. Is that a new MacBook or is that a, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know where the volume control is on this. I'm on a PC now instead of on my back on my Mac and all the controls are different. So you were talking about, sorry, everybody for the tech difficulties. Oh, I was just talking about how I, um, something I bought a couple days ago, you know, the guy was running a Facebook ad to targeted to, you know, how to write, how to create a really good video script, you know, and he gave you a free thing on that. It was a download. And then when you get there, then he tells you, well, the card of your video is a story and you need to know how to write a good story and really tell your story. So then he sells you a $7 thing from there. 
And then while you're waiting for that to be delivered, he upsells you on a $97 thing. And if you say, well, I don't know if I really need that right now, then he breaks it into three payments of $30 over the next three months kind of thing. So I was saying when you create a, um, I think your marketing needs some kind of a funnel that you logically take people from point A to point B to C to D and, and flesh that out. And if somebody backs off, then okay, then offer them a better deal or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it seems complex, but it was, I think if you mapped it out on paper and then hand it to your VA, <laughs> and say, this is what I want you to do. You know, uh, I mean, you still have to create your videos and stuff for it, but. Um, so you're talking about creating a cl a course. Is that what you were talking about while I was away getting on another computer? I was going to talk about creating a course. I was just talking about, somebody asked me about call, um, cost per action, you know, and I was saying how. No oh, calls to action. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. So our cost CPA, whatever you call it, you know, where you're paying per action for your advertising. Oh, and, click, uh, click, oh, per, per pay per click, you mean? Yeah, that kind of stuff, uh -huh. you know. Um, so I was just saying that if you're going to do that kind of thing, you want to promote something free and then gradually lead people into something paid from there. Yeah. So. And, and this guy did an excellent job because I never heard of him before. And I ended up buying the $97 thing. So, you know, which I normally don't do, but he targeted it really good because I make videos and I think he targeted me by that. Yeah. By people who make videos. Right. So if you, if, if we have people here who are listening today, who are pretty new to online marketing, um, you know, there are a couple of things that I think of as like the, the things that will help you keep your, your system very simple. And Marnie, I'm, I'm, I'm betting you will agree with some of these, but if you don't, let me know. Um, and the first is to, and I know people get tired of hearing this and I have, I have sometimes clients who resist it, but the first is to be really clear about what it is you are wanting to market online. If it's a product or a service, be very clear about your description of that and exactly what it does to enhance a person's life or solve a person's problem. And also have it very clear in your mind about who do you think would be interested in this product or service. Because from that, all of your planning for what you're going to do online will stem. And if you aren't willing to take, to take the time to set that up really precisely at the first, what will happen is your advertising will be not quite on target. It'll be kind of loosey goosey because you're not sure about the benefits of your product or service and you're not sure exactly who most would want that. So your advertising will be too broad and you'll pay, you'll spend money online that doesn't do you any good. So Marnie, would you agree with that statement or do you have something? I'm sure you've got lots to add to that, but simple is what we're after here, teaching you simple systems and simple, it means being very clear and very specific about what you want to achieve, whether you're advertising on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, or even if you're not advertising, if you're just using those social media channels to be able to be very clear about what you want to achieve on that channel is really how you can keep it simple and focused. Yeah, I agree. I mean, when you were bounced out, yeah. <laughs> I was kind of talking about how you, uh, you need to know what you're conveying and just be like a beacon conveying yeah. that, that main message, you know, um, yeah. and be very clear. Like you're saying, be very clear on what it is you're selling because you don't want to confuse people. Well, you know, uh, there was somebody in that, um, in my salon for women entrepreneurs that I have, I have a secret Facebook group for women entrepreneurs that if anyone here listening would like to be a part of, you're welcome to join. You have to, private message me on Facebook and ask me for entrance and I'll let you in. But at any rate, we were talking about um, who and do what statements. And, you know, I, I, I work with a lot of people who are in transformational services, things like massage therapy and Reiki and that kind of thing. And this one lady got on there and said, well, I'm a massage therapist and I specify, I specifically work with people who have frozen shoulder and they're better and they're, they're completely well in, in no more than 13 weeks. 
And I thought that is very clear because most I I am a massage therapist. I've I owned a massage therapy clinic for 14 years. And I know thousands of massage therapists who say, well, I help women relax. That's not enough. It, it's not a clarion call. So she has a statement that keeps her system very simple. She is only going to be on marketing channels and only going to do advertising around that specific target market. And therefore, those people who have frozen shoulder and who want to do something about it, they're going to look at that and say, that's for me. They're going to raise their hand. So that's a very specific unique niche and it keeps her marketing and everything she does in her business very clear and simple and very focused. Cool. Like that. Most of us are too chicken to do that. <laughs> but why though? why are you too chicken to do it? I know why. What what would you say? Oh, I think we mourn over all the other possibilities that we're not pursuing or something, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but if you can't, if no one is knows specifically what it is that you're about and your advertising reflects that, I mean, how many times, Marnie, have you worked with a client and the first thing you might do is review their website? I know that's what I do. I do. I look at their website and I mean, I looked at one the other day and they, and they did yoga and they did meditation and they did weekend retreats and they did all these different services but the, the website really never spoke to who they did that for specifically and never really tied together what was the purpose of all of these different transformational services. Was it to improve health? Was it to improve mental well-being? Was it to help people get through divorce? Was it to help people who had had some addiction process? It was all over the place. It didn't say, it said everything to everybody. And therefore, it said nothing to nobody. Yeah. 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 So, Looks like we've got a question. Uh, yep, yeah, we do. What is your marketing platform or a system you are using to get leads and clicks without paying for ads? And I'm going to pin that up here so that, um, and thank you, Evang Evangelos, for your question. Um, I was going to see if I could pin it up here. I don't know. Doesn't it won't pin. While you're doing that, I will. I have been playing around with co-promote. Have you have you played with that? No. It mainly works with Twitter. It it looks like they've got a Facebook option coming soon, but it's I don't think it's functional at this time. But it works sort of like you invite your friends to it, and then um, every time you share. So like I have forty seven hundred Twitter follow, followers. Yeah. So every time I share one of these posts they recommend based on my interests, I earn 4,700 points or share points. And then I can boost a post and say, hey, I want to put this post out. And then my post gets shown to other people. And then I get, you know, so many shares. So if they share it, then it comes off of my tally of what I've accumulated. Is it a plugin for your, for your Twitter? It's an app. It's an app and it links to your Twitter account. And uh, I've been using it to promote the uh, the summit I'm doing, and I've had lots of shares, you know, with it. I've probably it's gone out to maybe a hundred thousand extra people that I wouldn't have reached uh, just by me, you know, sharing other people's oh, posts. Someone was asking, "What's it called?" And it's called Co Promote, correct? CoPromote.com. Co Promote. So, Evangelos. Um, that is one thing, co-promote, and it's just an app on your phone? Yeah, it's a website, uh, CO, no hyphen, just co-promote. Oh, okay. So it was an app, though. I like the app because I can just, you know, kind of thumb through it. So co-promote.com like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, so, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, like, if I have a few minutes, I'm in waiting in line or whatever, I'll pull it up and I'll flip through and see if there are any good posts that I like. I'll click through and make sure they're good ones. And then I'll share them. And that'll earn me like 4,700 shares. I just use my spare time to yeah. find something to promote. They'll sell you exposure too, but I, I haven't had to do that. Okay. So copromote.com. And then another marketing platform or system that you're using to get leads and clicks without paying for ads. 
Um, I use Facebook and I specifically use small, short, two minute or less video tips that I place on Facebook on my uh, business page on Confident Mark on Facebook slash Confident Marketer. And I can with with I've noticed that with video, you can get clicks and shares more than you can with the written word, or at least for me lately. And, you know, it, it, if you want to pay five bucks, you can boost that post. But sometimes with video, you can get a good many people viewing that without you having to pay to promote. But the bottom line to what I would say, though, Marnie, and I'd like to hear your opinion of this in answer to this question about what is the marketing platform or a system you're using to get leads and clicks without paying for ads um, you're either going to have to really drive a lot of traffic to your website through social media, or you're going to have to accept the fact that the days are pretty much gone where you're going to get a lot of organic boost and click. You're just not going to get internet juice without paying for it in some way, in my opinion. Would you agree, Barney? Probably, you know, either that or uh, collaborating with other people of some kind, you know, do something where you all agree to promote each other's stuff or, uh, you know, you could do that with loosely in your own Facebook group or, um, you know, I do that with like the virtual summit. Really, that's the principle of it. We're all co-promoting types. Yeah. The, so yeah, doing so. things that are cross promotions um, and doing like summits like Marnie is doing right now. Um, Marnie, why don't you why don't we pause a minute and you let people know about what that is? Because there might be some people watching who don't know. Uh, it's called the Having It All Summit. It's uh, I interviewed 19 women entrepreneurs about their happy marriages and what make them tick. So uh, if you go to ignitepoint.com, you just pick, you know, whether you're single or whether you're um, happily married or, you know, just want some ideas or whether you're kind of cynical about marriage or whether you're, you know, you're in a marriage, but you're having some issues. So you pick which track you want to follow and then we send you and highlight the different audios that fit your track. So um, it's, it's been going pretty well. So, but I, you know, I will say, I've got to be honest and say that I've done these kind of things a lot over the years Yeah. and the ability to get something out there is way lower now <laughs> than it was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, it's just cutting through the noise without paying for something. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think you have a topic that a lot of people are interested in, although it's probably pe maybe people who are different than your usual target market. And my, I mean, I'm a part, Marnie interviewed me for that. And so I'm happy to be proud of, or happy to be part of that book. But, and I did actually yesterday, Marnie, I did a solo email to my list about that. And I have been promoting it on social media as well. And I really, I think I got one person who emailed me and said, oh, you know, I think this is delightful. I can't wait to go and listen. But it's not typically, people don't typically come to me for that kind of thing and, you know, talk about marriage. They typically come to me for personal growth and business growth. So um, it might have been a little bit of a mismatch to the market, but I don't care because I enjoy doing it. And I think it's something. Most people are in a relationship. They are, <laughs> you know? they are, but whether they're paying attention to it and it's top of priority for them is something else again. You know, they just are kind of, a lot of people are just kind of rocking along, I think. But there's a lot of good tips and a lot of good insights in there. I think I've enjoyed reading what other people have said that you interviewed along with the other people you interviewed. So going back to online marketing systems, um, so we say know your product and services benefits, know exactly who would want that product or services to either enhance their life or to solve a problem, and then pick one or more social platforms, social media channels that match that market. Um, and, try, and, and don't try to be everything to everybody and, and try to wear yourself out being on you know, five or six or seven different social media channels at once because you'll wear yourself out and it will dilute the time you have to spend and you won't get as good an effect. So if you're all about Facebook, make it all about Facebook. If you're all about Pinterest or Instagram, make it all about those. You know, get really, really good and embedded in one and then start adding others as you have time. And then you can kind of cross promote against around those channels. And I think it makes a big difference to, you know, keeping your system simple 
will also help you figure out whether you're making strides or not. If you are on only one channel and things aren't working for you, then you know you're either on the wrong channel or your message isn't clear about what your uh, benefit is or that channel is not the right market for you and you need to go off and try a different channel. So that's one way to keep your system really simple and focused in so that you don't feel like you're trying to do too much and you don't have any um, anything to show for it anywhere. Yeah. You know, another way you could get marketing without having to pay it kind of thing is to be really actively involved in groups. Yeah. Facebook groups like what you're talking about. At least, you know, if you contribute and you're putting stuff in there, and people are going to want to know more about you or you you've got an end to be able to strike up a conversation with them in a private message. Cause Hey, we're both in this group and tell me more about what you do. And right. I think the old fashioned way of just reaching out to people and picking up the phone. And um, you know, one other thing I, I did the other day that was kind of cool is um, I got the new LinkedIn app and usually I hate LinkedIn. I don't care about anything about it. It's like counterintuitive to me or something but this app is better. And so it had this thing in there where you could congratulate people, yeah. you know, if they had a new job or whatever. So this one guy, I know that's a musician um, and I've promoted some stuff for him in the past. I noticed that he had gotten a new job. And so I congratulated him and he responded and he said, well, what do you got going? And I'm like, I've got the summit going. And he's like, well, give me the link. I'll, you know, I'll share it for you, you know? So just reaching out to people through, their birthdays or their anniversaries or, you know, or whatever um, to congratulate people, just open up some kind of conversation that puts you in their mind and everything. Um, it's relationship building really, I think. So. Yeah. I, I agree with you. It is relationship building. Um, and, you know, I, I'll tell you, I like face, I like private and secret Facebook forums. And that's one reason that I started the salon for women, women entrepreneurs. I know that people need a sense of community and they need a place where they're not just going to be marketed, marketed, marketed to where they can come in and share what they're doing and ask questions and get feedback and get resources. And so I started that group as a way for women entrepreneurs to just come in and introduce themselves and, say, you know, I read this interesting article and I thought it might be a benefit to some of you or, um, you know, I tried this course and it sold really well and here's what I did to market it. Or I tried to do this launch and it fell on its face and, and I'm trying to figure out what didn't work. You know, I would love to have your ideas. So um, I didn't set it up to be a marketing frenzy because there's enough of that already online for sure. Um, I set it up to be kind of a refuge where people could come in and really talk about what is on their mind and what is it that they uh, have read that is neat that they want to share. And so at some point, some of those people may end up becoming my clients. Um, and if I like today, I certainly let them know about this blab, Marnie. I stuck that into the into the salon, um, but I'm not marketing them something for cost is just a resource that they might want to avail themselves of. So I think building those kinds of relationships is really important in keeping your marketing system simple. And it really is like going to a networking group, except you're networking virtually instead of networking live. So I find myself on Facebook spending less and less time in the newsfeed and more and more time on the Facebook uh, forums that I belong to three or four of which are very uh, worth it to me. They're very, very worth it to me. And I know I can go in and get a quick question answered. Um, and I know that, oh, thank you guys for the props, appreciate it. Um, and I know that I can uh, ask a question without 15 people trying to market to me that they have the solution that, um, you know, that I need. So I like them myself. I think it's a great way to build community. Yeah, I agree. Okay, if, do we have other questions? If we don't, we'll probably call it a day. And Marnie, you and I don't have a calendar set up for next week, so we don't know when the next peep show is, but we'll send. Here's the thing about our peep show. If you would like to know, of course, if you follow us on Blab, uh, you will get notified when our peep shows are set up. We do them once a week, but the day floats varied upon what our schedules are. So it's not always on the same day. We shoot for that, but it doesn't often work. Um, 
So yeah, thanks, Barney. So you can go to confidentmarketer.com slash peep show and you can leave your name and address and we will send out an email um, the morning of and remind you that there's a peep show and give you the blab link for it. And you can also watch the replays, which are up on YouTube. So there you go. And we have someone, oh, um, the same person is saying, I have my own system, have, I have my own system. Oh, with examples of pages for clients, I guess. If you are interested, I have limited spots open. Okay, I don't know exactly what that is. I don't understand the comment, but at any rate, thank you for leaving that there for us. Marnie, anything else before we say goodbye? I think that's it. It's been a, a quick half hour. Sorry about the tech challenges. I'm, I'm afraid to go over here and open up my MacBook, but you know what? I'm a manifester, and not three days ago, I said to Bill, my MacBook Pro is seven years old, and I think it's time for a new one. <laughs> and now look what's happened. What? Be careful what you do. I guess. I guess. It's good to see you, Marnie. Take care, everybody. See you next week. Bye-bye.